Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and I am at the New York International Auto Show. And in this video, I'm gonna take you on a complete tour of everything brand new back there behind me at Javits Center. Stay tuned. <laughs> yes, gearheads, I am in New York City. And as you can see from the sign behind me, I'm here for the preview day but the show will be open March 29th through April 7th. And I'm gonna give you a quick tour of everything inside. If you can't make the trip up to the Big Apple, we'll go ahead and start over here at the Ford display right inside uh, the southernmost entrance of the show. We've got the new Escape that was updated for the 2023 model year. Same with the updated for 2023 model year Expedition. This is their big Max version. This is the King Ranch. It got an updated face like uh, that Escape next to me did as well. I really like the upgrades to it all the way around. Beating, fighting, uh, combating all of the stigma around electric vehicles and what they're capable of. Ford Performance has taken an F-150 Lightning and done some uh, fun Baja off-road stuff to it to make this the switch gear. Um, you can see it was made in per, uh, partnership with RTR Performance. Over here, we've got Bronco Sport. We've got Big Mac Daddy Bronco. This is the Heritage trim, so you get Ford spelled out in the grill versus Bronco. You get a white grill, a white roof. It is a painted roof. We get the white pinstriping, these big tall 35 inch uh, tires, Goodyear tires. They aren't Wrangler territory MTs. They're just Goodyear territory MTs. Can't have Wrangler branding on your Bronco after all. As we look inside, this is the top heritage trim. So we get the leather seats with this very intricate kind of throwback plaid pattern pattern i can talk that i really like in the robin's egg blue color it's a very clean look i really like those very basic wheels less is more and we will see that throughout uh, some of the booths here at the show less being more really like it as we come back behind the blue curtained wall you can see some more emphasis into bronco and off-road including uh, another Bronco Sport, a Wild Track back there, or sorry, Everglades. That's an Everglades model, but this one, the Raptor. We've loved every Raptor that we've had. And then coming over here, we've got Ford Ranger, finally going on sale. Very excited that we've got some new sheet metal in the midsize pickup truck segment from Ford, from Toyota, from GM, from anybody who's not called Honda or Nissan. But uh, coming over from there, we've got the Dark Horse Mustang, we've got the GTD Mustang, and then we've got Sydney Sweeney's Mustang. I do believe they announced who won this uh, while we we're at the show today. I did miss that press conference, but my goodness, look at that metal flake in this one. Can you believe it? It is very blingy for sure. Don't know if I really like it. We've got the Mach-E Rally, which was announced at the uh, press conference earlier. Really like it. Uh, we've seen variants of this before. We know that they've participated in the Rebel Rally, so really like the look of that. And then we've got your traditional Mustangs here in the middle. This is the one I want. This is the color combo, the powertrain, the everything that I want. This is the GT. Uh, it is in... a this eruption green with bronze wheels my goodness ford what have you created with this thing even that faux grill is bronze my goodness this this is a looker i want to get this thing out in the daylight and i want to punish those pirelli p0 tires this seems like it would be an absolute screamer all the way around we'll go ahead and peek inside what does the interior look like my goodness these performance seats as well yeah, th this one, this would be a fun one to rip around in if you're in the driver's seat. Don't know that I would want to ride shotgun in that one. Coming over here, we've got the 2024 F-150. Those are finally starting to hit dealer a lot. This is uh, one of the top trims. This is the Platinum. Fairly obvious. It's spelled right across the grill there. Not a lot has changed. They've simplified offerings, simplified trims. There's only one. Uh, fuel tank available 
and they've just made this more affordable to produce and given a slight update to the styling as well. Uh, all different trims get a unique light signature up front, and we'll see that in a, at least one other 2024 model around the corner here in just a little bit. We've got a Maverick over here. We've got a couple of electric vehicles. I will go ahead and say we've got a Lightning there and a Lightning there. Not much is changing for the Lightning for 2024. We don't get the updated looks or anything. The interior was already updated with all the uh, full screens, so we don't see some of the upgrades for the Lightning that we do on the standard truck. Here is another 2024 model. This is the Raptor R. Power numbers were released. Even though its main rival is no longer in production, this is the most powerful truck in its class. And yes, it's quite impressive. Over 700 horsepower, those big tall tires, lots of wheel travel, really liked the 23 that we tested. Can't wait to test that 24. You can see here is a Lariat trim. Uh, we did a full deep dive into one like this at the Chicago Auto Show, if you wanna check that out. I mean, just make sure, no, this is a platinum trim as well. Just doesn't spell it out across uh, the front, but yeah, the wheels and grill definitely looked a little bit different. Anyway, we do have several videos on the 2024 F-150. We were actually in Detroit when they pulled the wraps off these. Here's one last one. This is the trimmer. So you can see very different lighting signature, different grill versus the other trims. Over here, we've got the 2025 Explorer, one of the best-selling SUVs of all time. Again, the name of the game is simplification. We're down to four trims, so we don't get that off-road Timberline edition anymore, uh, which is interesting. We get two ST branded trims, uh, ST line and full ST. This is the Platinum or yeah, the Platinum, no more King Ranch. That's the full ST, there's the ST line. And then the base is the active trim that is spelled with an E, not to be confused with the active trim that Chevy does without an E on their vehicles. So there is Ford in a nutshell. Across from Ford, also right at the entrance is Nissan. A typical fare from Nissan to show off here. You've got their Pathfinder, you've got the Aria, you've got the original EV. I know I've misspoken in videos past, but yes, the Leaf was Nissan's first EV, one of the first mainstream brand EVs in the market, if not the first. They're kind of letting it languish on the vine. It is updated, has been updated over the years, but uh, clearly the um, the fascination within the brand is for the Aria. We've got several here, including two flanking this one uh, right at the entrance of the show. Also at the entrance is their updated Rogue SUV. It got a new fascia for 2024, new interior, new interior tech. So this being their bestseller should do very well for them. We did a deep dive also in Chicago. Their performance vehicles are uh, there are on full display here. We've got a couple of GTRs and then the new Nismo trim of the Z. The sad part about this Nismo trim for me, go ahead and peek inside here and I'll show you two pedals and two pedals only. We get the nine speed auto, no manual do it yourself version here in the Nismo. But look how thin these seats are. These are performance racing seats. Yeah. Uh, hoping to get some time behind the wheel of one. I know there is one in the fleet for me to check out. Just got to make time for it. We've got Armada. We've got more Pathfinders. We've got Sentra and Ultima. But the real big news is right here. I'm going to be fighting to get some time to do a deep dive with the new Kicks. Kicks is finally cool. I love this. I'm going to try and get a better angle, better shot on this. This is the first time I've truly appreciated the Nissan Kicks in its design and what Nissan is bringing. If this is the new design direction of the brand, I am absolutely here for it. Like I said, I'm gonna do my best to fight for time. You can see just how much media is set up around this vehicle right now here at the beginning of the show. Uh, but I'm gonna do my best to get a deep dive for you here on the channel coming very soon really digging the blue on this Pro 4X version of the Frontier. I can already tell you Holly wouldn't like it, but I am loving it. You know I like bright colors. 
So here we've got a bright blue Frontier Pro 4X, and then we've got uh, the um, special edition that they unveiled in Chicago. You can see here uh, Forsberg Racing uh, has helped. Oh man, it's a lot. So yes, Chris Forsberg, has modified this one. They showed it off at Chicago, but they had it buried way back at the back of the show. Very interesting choice, but here it is on full display. Climbing over rocks, really like it. You can see uh, we've got all the additional storage up top. We've got LED lights all the way around, uh, including here on the sides. So that is a nice touch. You've got these rock rails running down the sides as well. Updated wheels and tires updated approach angle, updated suspension, updated, updated, updated. Very, very cool, very interesting uh, take on the Pro 4X. And here you can see what the traditional, the standard, the factory Pro 4X is like. As we move further back, you can see we have yet another Nissan Rogue saying goodbye to the Nissan booth as we move over to Chevrolet. We're kind of divided here. We've got pickup trucks going into SUVs and back into cars and electric. So here we have the ZR2 version of the Colorado. We've got a ZR2 version of Silverado back behind it. We've got a Silverado Z71. What else we got back here? Another Silverado, a couple 1500s. And then back here, yeah, the full literal line of ZR2s here from Colorado to 1500 to 2500. Really, really want to sample a, a version of this. This is the one built in partnership with American Expedition Vehicles AEV. It is the Bison version of the ZR2 that comes with Boron stamped uh, front steel front bumpers. So yeah, really strong steel front bumpers, AEV specific wheels. Uh, tall Goodyear Wrangler tires. Yeah, Wrangler tires. Uh, we can actually be branded with that. DSSV Multimatic shocks. This is still leaf sprung back in the back. Uh, full size bed with the Multi Flex. Yeah, that's Chevy's branding. The Multi Flex tailgate back in the back. All the yellow accent stitching uh, with the contrasting colors here on the inside. AEV all weather mats. AEV in the headrest and ZR2 everywhere else. Really like it, can't wait to try it out. This one's high country. Interestingly enough, we don't have the 2025 Suburbans and Tahoes here. So these are carryover 2024s. The 2025 models are getting facelifted. They've done some work on them uh, to make the uh, Duramax diesel available in the Z71 trim. That is the play I am most interested in for the update to the 2025 version of the Tahoe and Suburban. But you can see these are 2024s. Pan around here, we've got a Colorado Z71 in front of a, a Chevy Trax. And since I made the joke over at the Ford booth, this is the active trim, but uh, yeah, no E on active. So Ford and Chevy both using that word as a trim level, but in two very different ways. This is one of the two top trims. You know I love this vehicle. Uh, 22 to 27,000 on the price tag. Very affordable. Only available in front wheel drive. So if you want all wheel drive, may I introduce you to Trailblazer. So we've got a couple options. This is the most affordable Chevy in the lineup. Trailblazer is just above it. Very similar interior proportions, even though Trax looks so much longer and wider. Very similar interiors on both of the vehicles. Uh, I just, me personally, prefer the style of the Trax just a little bit better. I, I do wish it were all wheel drive, but I get it. I really like the price point. That's what's selling me. It's fun, functional, offers all the tech and amenities people expect without breaking the bank. And then we've got their performance vehicles. This is the Chevy Corvette E-Ray, the first hybrid version of the Corvette, the first potentially front wheel drive version, depending on how you are currently driving, because it does have a stealth mode to only use the electric motor, which is not mechanically connected to the rear wheels. So yes, you could, in theory, have a front drive Corvette or an all wheel drive Corvette 
And yes, it is a hybrid. It's not a plug-in hybrid, but you do have a short-term little boost of all electric energy. Really like the interior contrast on this one. Don't know if I, I would order mine in white, but it does look really good. You can see we do get the Z06 wide body package on this one, so that really sets it apart. This one also has the Z06 carbon fiber wheels, which save about 40 pounds overall on the vehicle, which is very impressive. This blue one is just your standard Z51 equipped uh, 3LT version with the standard 6.2 liter engine. And then we have the Z06 with the flat plane crank 5.5 liter, most powerful naturally aspirated uh, flat plane crank V8 on the market. You can see we've got the full Z07 package. So we get those carbon wheels, that carbon wing, all the carbon arrow on this one and this kind of slate gray, putty gray, if you want to call it that. It's got the wide body kit that we saw on the E-Ray. So a very aggressive stance on this one. Very easy to pick out in a crowd. And then again, the E-Ray. The E-Ray shares an engine with the standard Corvettes, the 6.2, whereas the Z06 gets that flat blank crank. Over here, we've got their electrified offerings. This was Equinox. Uh, EV, we've got Silverado EV again, and kind of that putty gray. We've got it in black as well. The big story here is the Avalanche style foldable mid gate and storable rear window, which opens up, I do believe, up to 11 feet of cargo storage in the back of this pickup truck. We also get a full front trunk uh, underneath the hood because, of course, no engine under there. Another interesting um, sighting. I guess would be the fact that, well, not so interesting, but this is the outgoing Equinox. I was gonna say the interesting sighting is that this is the outgoing version, but I kind of glossed over because I got Corvette in my eye, eye line. Uh, back here behind uh, the gentleman in the green beanie, we've got the new updated 2025 Equinox. So I'll go ahead and spend some time with that one. You can see it is next to the new Traverse. Traverse finally has built-in price up on the website. This is the first ever Z71 offering of the Traverse, so very interested to see how that performs when we get it into some mud, some fun stuff out in East Texas. But yeah, you can see the design similarities here for Equinox, for Traverse. They are going boxier, blockier, more rugged looking as well. This is the active trim of the Equinox. Again, no E, you can see we get all-terrain tires. No Z71 trim, just active on the Equinox. You get the um, Toyota uh, 4Runner style white roof on this one, but very boxy styling. That borrows very heavily from the just updated Traverse. Like I said, the Traverse build and price site did just go up. You can see all the colors, all the options. Not a lot of options to choose from on the Z71. This is one that definitely appeals to me. I'm very interested to see how it stacks up against some of its competition. It's got a lot of competition lately, uh, especially from uh, newcomers uh, to the kind of off-road game in the uh, Hyundai Santa Fe XRT. So very interested to see there. I will say the powertrain is a 2.5 liter turbo four. So gone is that 3.6 liter. Uh, V6 that was in the 2023s and earlier uh, since the introduction of the Traverse. As we come over here, this is the RS trim. So you can see definitely on-road wheels and tires on this one, a much larger wheel wrapped in an on-road tire, but still you get all the black accents and the red and black interior, which looks very nice and classy as well. You can see we've got two plus two plus three seating and this one, again, we've got the outgoing Equinox. And then we've got Blazer EV, which this is a first for me to see. Uh, in person, at least, this is the police PPV version of the Blazer EV. Very interesting uh, showing here at the New York International Auto Show. I guess, you know, New York police cars are synonymous. I can't tell you how many police sirens I've heard since I've been here, but you can see just how they've got them outfitted. You still get the full screens in it, uh, like the civilian model. 
but that center console is modified and of course the rear seat has been changed so um, guilty parties can easily be put in and any messes cleaned up and then back in the back you can see we've got storage for all that necessary gear uh, that uh, New York's finest or wherever's finest uh, can uh, keep their stuff and have it protected all in a vehicle that is uh, rather fast, rather efficient. We've tested some. We do know that Chevy just had a stop sale lifted on this vehicle and then they brought them back with a price decrease versus that pre-stop sale. It's been a bumpy road for Chevrolet and General Motors with the launch of their EV program, but I foresee this being a very um, prominent vehicle for them once they get all the new vehicle glitches kind of worked out you can see all of these are really based on that rs trim uh, what's also interested interesting about the blazer ev is you can get front wheel drive rear wheel drive or all wheel drive the joys of an electric platform you can kind of pick and choose there we've got luxury cars galore here in the section dividing uh, the two different sides of the show uh, of course, here we've got the Porsche booth, including the new Macan EV. So that is actually this third one here. This is its first public showing in North America, the new Porsche or Porsche Macan EV. I think it is rather sexy looking. I think this is going to be a very important vehicle for them globally. Uh, and uh, I think they've absolutely nailed the design. It very much mimics the gas version of the vehicle, but still having an electric flair to it. Of course, being a Porsche, you know, it's going to have some strong um, performance capabilities. Interesting though, that they are still using that word right there. Turbo means nothing on an electric vehicle, but it is something so ingrained in the DNA of the brand. It's more of a trim than it is an actual functional descriptor. There we go, that's the word. And then the first EV from the brand, the Taycan. And let's see if I can actually open the charge port. Yes, I can. Very interesting in how you go about opening that charge port. Uh, you just swipe under there. Let's see if this one's got the dual ones. I always think that's an interesting addition for vehicles. Yes, it does. Dual charge port. So that is a very nice touch. And you just close it with a swipe. With a swipe. There we go. Uh, much better than, say, that Chevy Blazer EV with its charge door that literally takes forever. <laughs> well, uh, with it being that emphatic on the word literally. Oh, step. Uh, I, I, yeah, it, it takes forever. It's a long one. Now I am stepping into the wilderness of the Subaru booth. Subaru did not show off anything brand new at the show, but I do want to call attention to this display right here. You do know the Forester is brand new. In fact, they're wheeling one off stage right now, but we've got the, uh, a couple trims of it right up here. Anyway, Forester is brand new. This is the model in which it replaces. But when was the last time you saw a destroyed vehicle at an auto show. So yes, here is a wrecked version of the Subaru Forester. And you can see, yes, it definitely takes its toll, but Subaru is very proud of their safety efforts. You can see all the different airbags that deployed. You can see how the cabin of this vehicle is mostly protected and the front crumple zones really did take a brunt of the impact. So very safe vehicle. That's what it looks like pre-collision and post-collision. And we don't talk about what happens in a wreck enough here in the automotive industry, I don't believe, but crumple zones uh, have been a big thing. This is the first gen Forester. And many people are complaining about the new 2024, 25 Forester for uh, being too mainstream and not being weird and quirky like this one. It really used to be a tall wagon. Now it's more of a traditional SUV compact crossover. So over the years, it has lost its quirkiness, but you can see it is still a safe vehicle. That is definitely something 
that is ingrained in the Subaru DNA. We'll go ahead and peek around these tall evergreen trees at what they've got just on the other side over here. But in our process, we're gonna take a look at the puppies. Do we have puppies out yet? No puppies yet, but there will be puppies for the show. We've got Crosstrek Sport, Ascent, and we've got their EV, that is the uh, Solterra, but then we've got Wilderness Mountain. <laughs> so we see an Outback Wilderness uh, climbing up through the snow. We've got Crosstrek Wilderness up there enjoying some outdoor activities, and we've got Forester Wilderness. Yes, the outgoing Forester Wilderness coming down the muddy side of the mountain, and you can actually climb in and experience uh, what it would be like being in this type of descent in a wilderness model. You know they've got downhill descent control, all that fun stuff for helping maintain control of a vehicle in all situations. Say hello to Aaron. There he is. Uh, but then we've got the WRX, oh gosh, what, what is it? the TR Tuner Ready and the uh, Subaru BRZ TS tuned by STI versions. They're hesitant to call these full STI versions. I'm waiting for a full STI version, but yes, that's their two performance models. Shown next to a Hoonigan rally car. Like, come on, guys. It's almost sacrilege putting these two together, right? Not giving us a full STI. But that's just me. Let me get my grapes out of the way. And so now moving back to the front of the show, we're just going to zigzag this entire show. Uh, so you can see back to the other side of Wilderness Mountain, back to the other side of Subaru's first EV in the Solterra. We've got Volkswagen who is celebrating, I believe, 75 years in uh, U.S. sales here. We've got the new Atlas and Atlas Cross Sport. This Atlas is the peak edition. It's their off-road version. So again, going back to the uh, discontinued now, I guess, Ford Explorer Wilderness, the newly introduced Chevy Traverse Z71, and the, I have not shown it to you yet in this video, but definitely forthcoming at the end of the vehicle, the new Santa Fe XRT. This upgrades wheels, tires, not much else to give you an off-road edition. You can see we have a Thule uh, rack up here on the top. My backpack, let's see, do we have any logos? Oops. I have a Thule backpack, so I support this. But peeking inside, you can see we've got orange contrasted stitching. I do like the dual tones in here. This trim really does look really cool to me. Um, gives you a little bit of sportiness, a little bit of fun. But the most interesting oddball choice right here is the gear selector. Like it looks like an electric shaper. Very much showing you that, yes, this is the same company, Audi, Porsche. Yeah, um, that's very much what that reminds me of. Again, much like the uh, Chevy Traverse, gone is the V6. We only get a turbo four in these models moving forward, but you can see the updated face, the illuminated VW logo. Really like it, stands out, it's very classy. Coming over here, we have their electrified models. We've got the ID4, we've got the more performance ready ID4 with red lights, and then we've got the ID7. This one's an interesting one to me. It's a big sedan, big sedans are dying. I love big sedans, uh, I love what they're doing here. Very interesting. DVW screen right there. It gives you all pertinent information, but otherwise generally the same IP inside. I do like all the ambient lighting. They've got a lot of competition from their friends in Germany uh, from uh, Mercedes-Benz with ambient lighting. So they're doing some pretty cool stuff in here with this. You can see homing card and sound system. Plenty of room back here in the back. Let's see if we can get this uh, back end opened up because I do know it is a lift back. Lots of room back here, lots of storage. So not a traditional sedan, it is a liftback, but in an SUV hungry market, this is an interesting play for me, uh, that this is their next electric vehicle. After introducing us to this, I am very excited for this. I want one of these. Now, like they could be printing money if they had gotten these out much sooner. Uh, minivans just 
lend themselves to the EV lifestyle and design philosophy. Generally, you have a large skateboard platform with batteries at the bottom, and the bigger you can make that skateboard, the more battery range and capacity you have. The minivans, especially this one, not as aerodynamic as uh, other vehicles that could be styled above a skateboard platform, but yes. This being the US version, we get a three row version, so it's the extended wheelbase. I really like, much like the Atlas, you have a child seat uh, installed friendly, a second to third row transition. So you can leave a child seat installed here and it just pivots forward. Love that. Wish more three row vehicles did that, but you can see we've got uh, two seats back there in the back, three in the middle and two up front. So two, three, two for a total of seven seats here in the ID Buzz electric van. You can see we've got a tray table here, a phone pocket right here. Did I get this stuck? I think I did. There's a, a latch somewhere down here that I have to pull to get that to. Uh, there we go, <laughs> retract back into place. Also interesting, oh, look at here. Uh, when the door opens, entry exit mode, but we've got armrests on both sides of the front seats here. That's not typically something you see. Lots of storage in this one and fake wood up here, but lots of storage down here. Removable center console. We've got a uh, fold down a couple of couple right there. Fairly decent sized uh, glove box that is damped. Takes quite a ways while to get open. There are your buttons for your power sliding doors. Lots of storage in the doors, including USB power. Very interesting. So plug your phone in here, set it down next to you. I really do want to take one of these on a road trip very badly. Cannot wait to do that. Uh, very interesting vehicle in its style and its approach. Love the wheels, love the two-tone. This one does not mimic the exterior color on the inside. That is a miss for me. I want the blue accents on this one uh, for sure. Back in the back, you can see very large opening rear hatch. Lots of space. You've got this movable cargo shelf, so you can store some smaller items underneath. Gives you a flat load floor with the back seats when they are folded. Again, this being a minivan, you can't fold the seats into the floor because that's where the batteries are. Slight downside to the whole minivan thing when you have batteries underneath, but more uh, plugs and storage and cup holders, ceiling mounted vents. They're doing a lot of things right on this vehicle including giving side windows, but very interesting. They are sliding side windows. So yeah, there's your window right there, but very interested in this vehicle overall. There's a vehicle that started it all and the 1949 Beetle shown right there. Then we've got GTIs, Jettas, all that fun stuff. Before I leave this area, I've got to show you over in all the supercars and luxury cars, again, the electric Porsches back there. We've got a Ferrari and a Lamborghini side by side, but these are not competing Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Very different vehicles all the way around. And the one I'm most interested in is this one, Lamborghini Urus Who. This is uh, the first Lamborghini SUV. And isn't that just the most awesome thing you've ever seen? If you showed up in that, you are definitely gonna be turning some heads. All right, back to what we're here for, the new stuff not uh, old stuff that is uh, being kept up. VW is doing uh, some fun interactive stuff at the display. You can see we've got uh, driving simulators back here, but they are actually driving real vehicles. They are RV cars stationed outside of the entrance to the show. You can see uh, just by looking around on the screen, you get to see these people driving these cars on this track before you ever enter the show. You can watch them in real life uh, outside or you can come in and watch on the screen there. They also have the screen back here. Yeah, it's not quite as exciting uh, from this side, but yeah, definitely fun if you're in the driver's seat. So we'll move on from VW, going through Atlas and Atlas Cross Sport into Toyota, but we're actually gonna start all the way over to my right Lots of lights over here because the Prius just won World Car Design of the Year over, get this, a freaking Ferrari. Yes, Toyota won World Car Design of the Year over the Ferrari Pro saying, I believe I'm saying that right. And yes, very beautiful vehicle showing 
just how far uh, the Prius has come. I can't say that I agree with the design of this one. Yeah, definitely, no, no, not for me. Go Astros. Uh, then we've got the new 2025 Toyota Camry. We've covered this in LA and Chicago and Houston. We've seen it several times now. Looking forward to getting behind the wheel of one. Sienna minivan, perhaps one of my favorite minivans in the segment. Seats don't fold into the floor in this one, but they do recline a lot and slide a lot forward and backwards. I really like this for road trips. All Siennas are hybrids. There are just a few shortcomings of this one to me. Again, seats not going into the floor here in the second row. A little bit of a shortcoming, but I like this option better. The screen and tech is the old uh, Toyota system, not the new updated system, so the cameras are kind of grainy. Not my favorite. Remote start turns off when you unlock the vehicle or open the door. But the fuel economy on this bested the plug-in hybrid from Chrysler uh, on our Route 66 road trip because it's like 35 or 36 across the board, depending on if you get front or all-wheel drive. Other models here, we've got RAV4, uh, Corolla Cross. We've got the traditional highlander here we've got the grand highlander back there I, I would agree with this one just a little bit more than i would that yankees wrapped prius we've got the new crown this is a very beautiful vehicle so when we were at volkswagen i was talking about the id7 this has similar swooping lines especially the roof line i really enjoyed our time with the crown uh i i, I like big fun nice appointed uh, sedans and this definitely qualifies we've got corolla hatch over here we've got corolla sedan then we've got the gr performance vehicles including gr supra which yes was built in partnership with bmw we've got gr86 which yes was built in partnership with subaru and then we've got the true toyota gr corolla so this is the only gr product to be made entirely by uh, toyota we road tripped one of these two hours one way to dallas and back with an additional kid in the back i will say even though it is a hatchback it is a little limited on overall cargo capacity because of the placement of the battery back in the hatch things like that just something to note the hatch isn't all it's cracked up to be but it is an absolute fun vehicle to drive. Speaking of World Carl of the Year Awards, there it is. Yes, for the Toyota Prius. Got to show that off because, again, they beat a Ferrari to win that award. How many times can you say a Toyota Prius beat a Ferrari in anything? Then coming over here, we've got the new Toyota Tacoma. This is a trim that you cannot currently buy because it's using the iForce Max hybrid version of the turbocharged four-cylinder powertrain but this is the trail hunter trim this is the overlanding trim kind of a co-top trim with a trd pro version also not available right now because it is hybrid only powertrain we're still waiting on the availability of that but you can see we've got bronze wheels we can see the removal of leaf springs back here this one is also available in the short five foot and the extended six foot bed so you can get a long bed even though this one doesn't have it exterior lighting all the way around composite bed not my favorite i would option the spray and bed liner arb roof rack uh, or sports bar back here with a lot of places to strap some additional items you've got rock rails here you've got old man emu shocks which toyota has told us they actually had to partner with old man emu and help them get up to speed to make enough um, product to meet the demand of putting their product on a factory production Tacoma. So yes, it truly was a collaboration, a partnership between the two brands. And when one succeeds, they both, both succeed, but they were highly pointed towards Old Man Emu for performance off-road suspension. Other off-road goodies, we've got the ARB, uh, front and rear bumpers on this one. All Tacomas get these high lift point uh, jacks, jacks, jack points. There we go. Those are the words on the rear. Even the base SR gets these. Uh, so if you want to take a base model and upfit it, 
you're still going to get a high lift jack point but we do get these arb tow recovery points uh back on the back of this one arb steel uh rear bumper this part is plastic but the part that really matters is steel we've got plastic over fenders we already talked about uh the um wheels and tires on this one we've got additional air intake up here for cleaner air trail hunter in the led lights all the bronze accents i think it looks really good we've got the rigid lights up front the fog lights are actually dual tone so you can do yellow or clear uh, lighting depending on uh, the lighting needs of the situation very cool pickup truck can't wait to actually get to drive one toyota please please like want that would look so good covered in barnwell mountain red mud right like just imagine so yes over here we've got some more truck based products we've got the sequoia I've covered that one. We've got Forerunner, which carries over largely unchanged, aside from the new TRD specific color of Terra on this particular model. This is the TRD Pro version. Cannot wait for the updated version of that. We already see glimpses of what that's going to be. I'm going to show you that here in just a moment. We've got a Red Bulls uh, Tundra over there. We've got a Super Bowl edition Tacoma right here, but this, this is the Land Cruiser. We've covered this in several different occasions. Uh, I frequently say the Bronco better watch out uh, because I really think this is a big Bronco competitor, even though you can't take off the roof, even though you can't take off the doors. Price point is very similar. The independent front suspension, with locking differentials is very similar. The powertrains are very similar. This one comes exclusively with the turbo hybrid version of the four cylinder also found in the Toyota Tacoma. This rides on the TNGA F platform, which underpins Tacoma and Sequoia and Tundra and all the things. This is proving to be on paper, at least a very capable vehicle. We will get to sample one soon enough but yes bronco beware this is the base 1958 edition there is uh, a couple different trims above this one of them being a limited run launch edition but a uh, very cool vehicle in its own right cannot wait uh, to get to sample one for myself in person as we move further back toyota is really committed to mobility for all and so we've got all kinds of activities that you can do back here in the back, uh, including uh, some wheelchair basketball and different uh, activities along those lines. You can see the back of that Tundra does have a wheelchair lift in the back. So again, mobility for all. Back behind Toyota, we've got Kia. We've got the updated uh, Telluride. I'll go ahead and show you while I'm here. The updated Sorento, this got a new front fascia for 2024, new trims for 2024, uh, this being the X-Pro version, different wheels and tires, more aggressive off-road. We've got some more World Car of the Year hardware back here from the uh, Kia EV9. We've got World Green Car of the Year or World Electric Car of the Year and just overall World Car of the Year in the EV9. We've sampled a couple of them couple different trims it is a good car it is really capable again not the best three-row vehicle but a really competent family vehicle in its own right range i i could wish for maybe 20 30 more miles of range tops out in the high 270s i believe uh, but a very good vehicle all the way around this is a vehicle i'm most excited about in my life at this stage of my life this is the new Kia Carnival, shown off for the first time in Chicago. Holly and I did a deep dive of the top trim of that. But what I am most excited about for the Carnival is the fact that now they are offering a hybrid version using their 1.6 Turbo 4 powertrain. Unfortunately, only front wheel drive. Really wish they'd give us an all wheel drive variant of this because essentially this shares a platform with Telluride, so it can be done but I'm sure minivan packaging on the inside 
is playing into that just a little bit. But you can see right back here, this is why I like this vehicle so much. The lounge seats, just like the Toyota Sienna, we've got lounge seating back in the back of this one. These seats, because they recline so much, actually move like the Honda Odyssey, both left and right and forward and backward. So to truly get this airplane-like, uh, first-class airplane-like experience, you have to move them inboard just a little bit to fully lay them out. But then we get the curved 12.3 inch, dual 12.3 inch screens up here and all the updated technology that we've been seeing from Kia here lately. We also get head up display. This is gonna be a great family cruiser, especially with that hybrid variant. No fuel economy numbers listed as of yet, but uh, this is going from one of the thirstiest vehicles in the segment to potentially uh, the most one of the most fuel efficient and then very interesting here i'm going to climb up on the side dual sunroofs so yes dual opening sunroofs forget panoramic glass roofs uh, with a fixed in place rear glass this actually allows you to open up the back glass as well so again a lot to like about this kia carnival for families and then we've got the updated sorrento a couple more times back here the big news from kia is the new k4 forte is gone and k4 is here to replace it interestingly enough while we were here uh, they showed us a video also teasing us with a five door variant but uh where that though kia like why did you not bring the five door version of the k4 this thing is gorgeous we've seen it for a while y'all leaked your own pictures i want to see that five door in person because that thing is definitely the looker of the two, uh, even though this one ain't too shabby either. Then we've got the new K5. We saw it got a refresh at the Chicago show. It will be on sale later this summer. But yeah, wear that five door though. Kia, come on. And it was orange and I loved it. And I, you've got two turntables here. Like I fully expected it to come driving out. So I'm just, I'm a little, Kia, I'm a little salty about that. Like, why, why you got to do me that way? Why? All right, over to Honda now. We've got the HPD version of the Honda Ridgeline. We just got out of the new Trail Sport version of it. Uh, spoiler alert, we may have almost gotten it stuck. Uh, this is more of the trim I think I would go for. Kind of spec it up. This is, again, the HPD version. You can see we've got the same general grabber tires that we had on the Ridgeline version with uh, HPD Black Edition seats. A lot of interesting uh, optioning here on the Ridgeline. And I, I was talking about it in my Santa Cruz video. I don't know if you've uh, had the opportunity to check that one out. But of the midsize pickup trucks in the segment, all of them, this has the best hands down rear seat in the business, especially when it comes to rear seat under floor storage. Look at that. That is a uh, half ton pickup bed or pickup rear seat storage capability. You don't typically see flat under floor storage like this in this segment. Usually it's like little teeny tiny cubbies. This is 100% the best under floor storage in the segment. Also things that make this the best rear seat in the business tri-zone climate a true tri-zone climate with its own fan speed we have heated outboard seats on this hpd black edition so yeah really the best back seat in the midsize segment even if it is wrapped in new york jets uh garb here on this one i, w I do want to call these seats uh into uh um, attention because they're uh perforated, they are heated and ventilated. Again, something that we did not see in our trail sport model. This, this is what I would get. It's much more luxurious, nicer, and yeah, it's what I would want. Then we've got some cones set up here for the uh, Moto Compacto suitcase. I'll show you some pictures of it uh, as we move around the Honda booth, but there's a new Pilot trail sport. We've got a Civic, Civic Type R, love. Civic Type R. They've rolled out the red carpet with this vehicle. 
And I'm actually going to peek inside and show you exactly what I mean with that incredibly corny dad joke. Look at all the red, red seats and yes, red carpet with the Honda Civic Type R. Unlike the GR Corolla uh, rival to this, uh, which uses all wheel drive, this is still using front wheel drive only. I can't imagine how good this would be with the IVT4 M, IVT M4 <laughs> all wheel drive system that we experienced in the Ridgeline Trail Sport very recently. Uh, it, it really is one of, if not the best, most robust all wheel drive systems that you can find. Uh, very, very impressive. Uh, it, it makes video work very boring because we couldn't do anything fun or stupid. Over here, we have the Honda Prologue. It's our full, first fully electric vehicle built on a shared platform with the Chevy Blazer EV. A lot of the things that plagued Blazer EV are not plaguing Prologue because different infotainment uh, systems, different software systems in this one. But yes, a very similar vehicle. We did a deep dive when we were in LA last November, so I won't go into too much detail there. We've got Accords, we've got more Civics. As we move from Honda, there we go. There's a Moto Compacto, <laughs> the motorized suitcase. $1,000 gets you 12 miles per hour, 12 miles of range. I did it in LA. It puts a big smile on your face. Those things are pretty heavy, so they aren't like super mobile, but yeah fun little vehicle. As we move from Honda into Acura, which is the performance brand of Honda, you can see we've got a lot of fun vehicles over here. RDX, Integra, TLX, uh, MDX, and ZDX. So this is Acura's version of the Chevy Blazer. I mean, the Honda Prologue. And yes, this is their full-on performance type S version. Actual tri-tone uh, paint job on this one, a very intricate lighting up front. I really like how the uh, LED lighting is around the shield up front, faux grill, if you will. Uh, there is your charge port door. The interior, again, very similar to the vehicles on which it shares a platform, but upscaled just a little bit because, after all, it is an Acura. I really love the seats. And this, really love this. Yes, more of that in family vehicles. The retractable shade, absolutely what I want to see in a family vehicle, but all kinds of fun Acura models here at the New York Auto Show and uh, all around the show floor. We've got some more Honda models back here in the back, CRV, multiple CRVs, and then the Honda Odyssey minivan. GMC and Buick is at the back of the show. We've got the all new Acadia. We've got Hummer EV SUV. We've got 2500 Denali Ultimate. We've got Yukon Denali Ultimate. We've got GMC Canyon AT4. We've got Sierra AT4, Sierra Denali EV, and the one and only Buick product on the show floor, the Invista. This rides on a shared platform with the Chevy Trax, just a little bit more luxurious. It offers stuff the Chevy Trax does not, like a power lift gate. So if you want a little bit more luxury from an affordable, fun to drive vehicle, check out the Buick and Vista. On the other side of the big wall, kind of hiding Buick and GMC at the very back of the show, that is slightly unfortunate to them, is the Polestar booth. And you can see we've got the Polestar 3, and the Pulsar 4 here, which you would think the 4 would be bigger than the 3, but it's not. Anyway, I look to get some time with these uh, a little bit later in the show. I really like how Pulsar does all my work for me. It tells me exactly what it is, what the battery size is. That 111 kilowatt uh, battery is one of the biggest in the two row crossover segment. Uh, but it is built on a 400 volt architecture, so it still takes a little bit of time to drive. And then we've got the new Polestar 4. No back window in this one. I'll show you that here in just a moment. But we heard from some journalists who tested this in icy conditions, and they say it pivots like a rear wheel drive or a mid engine car. Mid engine is the word I was going for, by the way. Uh, very fun to drive. Lots of uh, cool tech in this, uh, both on the safety front and just ingenuity. But yes, no back window 
in the back of this, they were saying that is more towards uh, giving the overall shape while still being uh, supportive to the occupants on the inside. It's all about the placement of the crossbar back in the back of the vehicle for safety and rollovers and things like that. Very interesting looking at it from back here without a back window. What do you think? Is that weird? No back window? Like it, your brain doesn't like compute. Where's the window? Uh, we've got some more luxury vehicles over here, Volvo and Audi. As we pivot to the electric test track for Hyundai, this is one of two electric vehicle test tracks. Uh, they do have some non-electrics back here, I believe, as well, but this is the Hyundai test track where you can uh, experience Hyundai products. So naturally that leads us to the Hyundai booth. We've got the updated Elantra. This is the inline, not the full-fledged in. We'll see that here in just a moment. It got a facelift, updated interior, exterior. The new Sonata, it also got updated tech and interior. This too is the inline version. Really like it, really like the updated style of it. It is one of the best looking midsize sedans in the segment. I think, I think it looks better than the Kia K5 on which it shares the platform. Let me know your thoughts. Better, worse than the K5, same, different? Yeah, you let me know. But uh, we started with the Elantra inline. This is the Elantra in, the full-fledged in. You know what it is because it's in the in specific blue paint. Uh, this is set to compete or does compete with Honda Civic Type R and GR Corolla. Another vehicle here in the blue paint of the Hyundai in division is the World Car of the Year winner for Performance Car of the Year. You can see on that screen right there, the Hyundai Ionic 5 in and I'll go ahead and show you the trophy the trophy's right here I don't know why I just showed you the screen look there's the trophy right there for world performance car of the year it's sibling the Kia EV6 GT won that same award last year but this one takes it up a notch it has a bigger battery on the inside and more performance than the EV6 GT so I do reckon that this one will be a lot of fun we do have an updated interior over uh, typical Ionic 5 models. You can see we actually have a center console in here, not a moving center console. Just a little bit different look. And then we've got those in specific seats, racing bucket seats. Uh, as we move across, we've got the electric Kona. But I did want to take you to a non-in version of that Ionic just to show you how different that interior is. See, we've got the sliding center console in this one little bit different look and the seats definitely are not the same racing buckets their other electric model is the ionic 6 we should be sampling one of these very soon if you can snag an se for lease before the end of the month of march you can actually get it for 249 down and 249 a month for a two-year lease with 12,000 annual miles so very interesting, one of the cheapest vehicles to lease in America. A lot of uh, incentive there to check that one out. Then we've got the new 2025 Santa Cruz and Tucson uh, variants of the uh, crossover lineup at Hyundai. This is the inline version. This is a hybrid all-wheel drive version using the 1.6 turbo four under the hood over 200 horsepower, over 200 pound-feet of torque. I've already filmed a full deep dive on both of these vehicles. That video will be coming soon. If you're watching this late, it is most likely up already. We got updated looks up front, just a slightly toughened up uh, front fascia on this one, a little bit of massaging to the sides, and then updated technology and screens on the inside. Gone are the twin, two, uh, 10.25 inch screens we get curved 12.3 inch dual screen unit here we actually get physical controls can you believe it physical controls for volume and hvac so we've got that uh, going for us instead of all those capacitive touch buttons that were in the 2024 models and prior so they have been listening to their customers those are the biggest updates the uh, tucson still remains either full gas or hybrid or plug-in hybrid. Ironically enough, we do not offer hybrid 
versions of the Tucson, I mean the Santa Cruz, even though it's based on the Tucson, you only get the 2.5 naturally aspirated and the 2.5 turbo four on the Santa Cruz. Let me know down in the comments, is that a miss? Its main rival is the Ford Maverick. And yes, they offer a hybrid. So why don't we get a Tucson hybrid? I mean, a Santa Cruz hybrid when we get a Tucson hybrid. Look, geographically, it's in the Southwest. But yes, one of those cities. Speaking of which, Santa Fe. This is the new Santa Fe. We recently drove it uh, in uh, Tennessee. This one is particularly special because it is commemorating their uh, 26 years, coming up on 26 years of Hyundai Hope on Wheels. That is their charity giving to child cancer research. Uh, some of their big announcements this year. Last year, celebrating 25 years, they gave a $25 million donation to cancer research, childhood cancer research. This year for 26 years, yes, it's $26 million. And you can see over their time funding pediatric cancer research, a quarter of a billion, with a B, billion dollars given to pediatric cancer research. Awesome cause, awesome vehicle, by the way, too. So you can definitely check that out. Very great three row vehicle. Kind of feel like it's gonna steal some sales from Palisade. You let me know. As we move across over here, you can see we've got uh, more Tucson's and more uh, Santa Fe, Santa Cruz. I'm, they're killing me with these Southwest names. Uh, but there is the XRT version of the Tucson, the limited version of the Tucson, and yes, the XRT version of the Santa Cruz. Uh, XRT specific front and rear bumpers, improved approach angle, tow hooks, which Tundra doesn't even get tow hooks up front, 18-inch uh, wheels wrapped in all-terrain tires. Lots of fun stuff there on the XRT version. Excuse me, breakfast working coming on back and then we've got santa fe xrt so again we've talked about it a couple times we had uh, traverse z71 we had the uh, peak edition of the vw atlas here we've got the xrt version of the santa fe quick sneak peek if you haven't seen my drive video of the santa fe xrt the only thing i feel was really missing on this one was a front facing camera, which Hyundai actually rectified with the XRT version of the Santa Cruz. You have a front facing, actually 360 cameras in the Santa Cruz. As we come to the end, we're gonna wrap up with three Asian luxury brands. We've got Lexus, which they aren't really showing off anything new. Uh, there at the far end, we've got the LX and GX. We'll make our way over there in just a moment. We've got RC and RC race car right here, LC over there. But I want to start with Infinity and work my way back from Infinity because we were at the Dallas Auto Show. We saw the QX monograph concept, which they promised was the future of the QX80. And now we have the new QX80, which is essentially the same vehicle. Very little has changed from that vehicle to this vehicle, including we still get the 3D uh, updated logo up front here. And uh, a very, very luxurious interior on this one. We're gonna let Joe and Lori finish filming their review, but Escalade who is what Infinity is saying with this. Absolutely an Escalade fighter, perhaps the only really true serious Escalade fighter when it comes to overall bling. Yes, I know the Navigator exists. Yes, I know Navigator has a lot of bling. That just, there's something about that. The, the aura, the cachet, the vibe that QX80 gives off now, especially in that top autograph trim, which crests $110,000. Yeah. Escalade hoop. Anyway, GX from Lexus. This is Lexus's Land Cruiser. Uh, this comes with the twin turbo V6 found in Tundra. So if the four cylinder version uh, of the Land Cruiser ain't for you, get six cylinders here with the GX. Then we've got TX, which is their version of Grand Highlander. 
I'm not in love with it. We'll just leave it at that. It's a good car. I'm not in love with it. Then we've got RX. We've got another GX back there. And we will finish off here with perhaps my favorite brand. I'm loving practically everything they're doing. This, of course, being Genesis. We've got the electrified GV70. We've got the GV60 back there. We've got the updated 2025 GV80. Much smoother, cleaner lines. Much more in line with what we saw when they introduced GV70. Less angular, less sharp design. More rounded and smooth. And then you can see over here, we've got the GV80 Coupe which yes, of course, they showed us the concept of at this very show one year ago. Very, very much love the design of this vehicle. Uh, the, perhaps the best looking SUV coupe on the market. Bar is kind of low on that. GLE coupe uh, from Mercedes has improved, but I really, really like the GV80 coupe, especially since they've rounded the styling more. I'm not going to call this GV90 because it is the Neo Loon concept. It is New Moon, is essentially what that stands for. But this shows us what a potential GV90 would look like. Yes, this is essentially the luxury version of the World Car of the Year in the 2024 Kia EV9. This is what the Genesis version will look like. It is an expression of reductive design. If the style line needn't be there, it ain't there. It is a very clean, very simple design, but very elegant in its approach. It very much reminds me of a Mercedes Maybach GLS. Like it is very, very upscale. These coach doors are not gonna see production. Neither is the swiveling front seats, but you can see exactly what the style is going to look like moving forward for the brand as uh, we get more and more electrified vehicles from Genesis. Just look, this is again, that reductive design. If a line needn't be there to hide some of the style of it, it, then it's not there. I already have a full video of this from its launch at the Genesis house. So you can go check that out. Speaking of its launch at the Genesis house, it was magma day when they showed us these three magma orange vehicles. Uh, there was a fourth one there. It was the GV80 coupe concept that was here last year. I guess I decided not to bring it back. It's probably still on display over at Genesis house, but they moved these down the way uh, here to the Javits Center to show off here. I've got a full video highlighting what makes the magma edition so special, but it is essentially the performance trim of Genesis moving forward, starting with this GV60 right here in front of me. Remember that blue Ionic 5N? Yeah, this is its Genesis counterpart. I fully expect it to have the 641-ish horsepower and the larger 84 kilowatt hour battery, but we really don't know any specs. We just know what it looks like, and I love it. I also love the vehicle right next to it. You can race this one today if you have Gran Turismo. This is just a design study of what Genesis can do. I love everything that they have been putting out here lately. This thing is absolutely stunning. And next to it is the GV or the G80 Magma. Unfortunately for anyone here in North America, this is a Middle East only uh, production model, limited production for this vehicle. You can see we've got a lot of carbon fiber accents on this one. The black and orange interior, love it, love it, love it. This magma orange is actually metallic. Uh, it, it is very beautiful. All three of these vehicles are very beautiful. I would say the one in the middle is perhaps the most eye-catching. Uh, this G80 is the one I most want, but can't have but I'm very interested in the GV60 Magma. It's listed as a concept currently, but I don't believe that will last for long. You can see this is the international version because we don't have real, real rear view mirrors. We have the cameras, but yes, I've got a video highlighting all three of these, plus that GV80 coupe concept that they showed here last year, all from the Genesis house event where they unveiled all of these vehicles. 
that is it for the main show floor here at the Javits Center at the 2024 New York International Auto Show. There is more stuff out in the lobby. There's more stuff downstairs, a full EV test track down there. Robert Downey Jr. may or may not have been here. I'm not quite sure, but he's showing off a collection of fun cars. So there is a lot to see here, even if there is a suspicious missing family of brands here. They are also represented, represented outside with Camp Jeep. You know, I'm talking about Stellantis. That was a national stoppage of uh, auto show coverage uh, for Stellantis, but there is some representation from them outside with Camp Jeep celebrating its 20th, 20th year of Camp Jeep. So you can experience that. But yeah, that is all for the entire show floor here at the Javits Center. If you want to see more from us, hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell because deep dive videos of most of this stuff will be coming soon. You won't want to miss that. Find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, Threads, YouTube, everything at GT Garage Talk, or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for me, from the Javits Center here in New York City with just gorgeous, gorgeous magma orange uh, concept from Genesis. Until next time, gearheads. Bye.